Okay, well, this is going to get super loud, super fast, because my computer turns into a jet engine the second I start screen recording. So, anyway, what is up everybody? Today we're gonna to be doing a seamless speed ramp transition in Final Cut Pro 10 X 10. It's the same thing. Anyway, this is one of my favorite transitions to do in Final Cut. It's super easy. It looks really good if you do it right, and you don't need to install any plugins or anything like that. So let's just do it Philip DeFranco style and jump right into it. So once you get Final Cut Pro opened, the first thing that you're gonna do is just go up here to File, New, and Project. So we're just gonna create a new project and we're just gonna call it Speed Ramp YouTube. I just did it in 1080p. You can do it in 4K if you want, but for this, we're just gonna do it in 1080. Uh, next thing, you're gonna go up here to Fit, just so we can see the entirety of this. So as far as your clips go, you're going to want them to be moving in the same direction. So say you're filming something and you're panning one way, you're gonna want the next clip in the project to also be moving that way in order to do this transition correctly. So I'm gonna import two videos that are both moving in the same direction and then we'll just kind of build off from there. So we're gonna start with these two clips over here. So first thing that I usually do is I kind of drag and I find exactly which part I want to use. So for example, I think about right here is where I want this clip to start. So I'm just gonna press I which is going to select the beginning of the clip, and it stands for in. And then I'm gonna kinda scrub across, see where I want it to end. Say maybe about right here. And then I'm gonna push the O key, and that's gonna be out. So at the end of the clip. We're gonna drag that down here. If you want to zoom in on your timeline, all I do is I just drag my fingers like this, and that zooms in and out on the timeline. We've got that first clip, and then we'll do the same thing for the second clip. So kind of scrub, go in here, go in right here, and we'll see the clip ends pretty much at the end where I want it to, so we'll go out. And then if you want to do a hot key and put that in the timeline, I usually push the key W, and that's gonna insert it wherever this uh, playhead is set. So I accidentally had it set at the beginning, but in reality, I want it to be over there. So we're gonna merge these two clips together. And we're just gonna go ahead and mute this. So as you can see, these clips are kind of moving in the same direction, just at different speeds right now. We're just gonna kind of clean these up just a little bit on the ends. So you want the movement to already be happening. So the drip pot for the coffee isn't actually stopped moving yet. It's still moving by the end of the clip. And then same thing that with this, you don't want the movement to start at the beginning. You want the movement to already be happening as the next clip shows up. So as you can see, these clips are moving in the same direction. So we'll be able to stitch them together. So in order to create this speed ramp transition, all you're gonna wanna do is click on one clip and you're gonna do control option R and that's going to give you a timestamp for how fast this clip is going. So this clip is currently at 100%, which means you can see it in real speed, and this, this was filmed in 60 frames a second, so I'm actually able to slow this down if I want to. Ideally, you want the clips to be going at the same speed, so even if I play this here, it already kind of sets as a transition, but in order to stitch those together and make it look a lot better, you're gonna wanna do a speed ramp. I'm gonna do the same thing how we selected the clips. I'm gonna push I where I want the speed ramp to start. I usually selected about a quarter of the way through and then same thing about a quarter of this clip and then again push O. And you see how I have two clips selected, but they're in the same selection bracket, basically. And this is where our speed ramp is going to occur. So I'm going to go up to this little timer and I'm gonna to go to fast and we're just gonna to go to four times. And as you can see, that's created our speed ramp. We're gonna go up here to modify. I'm just gonna render all of these just so we don't get any lag when we watch it on playback. Um, so just give it a minute to render, boom. So it's rendered, and just to watch it back, 
you can see, boom, that speed ramp just made the transition a little bit smoother. In order to maybe make it a little bit smoother, you can kind of tell this is really fast and then this changes speeds. So the end of this clip doesn't really match up with the beginning of this clip as far as speed goes. So it doesn't feel like they're moving into each other. It's kind of like super fast, slow, and it's just, it's kind of a weird look. So in order to fix that, you can see the time codes. So what we've done is we've sped the end of this to 400 and the beginning of this to 400 to try and match. But because this one is already happening slower, we're just gonna click on this down arrow, go to fast, and we're at four times right now, so we're gonna up that to eight times. And sometimes when doing this, it extends some of the clips, so maybe this isn't exactly where I wanted it to start, so I'm going to drag this back, just one frame. I'm actually going to extend this, so again, I just pushed O to select the beginning and where I want this clip to end, and we're gonna do this whole section instead of just that little one. And now, we can kind of drag this back and play it back. And as you can see, that is a little bit better as far as the speed ramp goes. Now this clip is a little bit shaky, so I might actually stabilize it and see if that looks a little bit better. I'm actually gonna stabilize this one too. See if we can't get a bit of a smoother transition. Again, I'm gonna go up here to modify and render all, and we'll just wait for that. All right, so now that it's rendered, um, and as you can hear, my computer is slowly starting to become that jet engine that I talked about earlier, but let's just watch this back. So that feels a lot smoother. So as you can see, the timing is right, the speed is right, um, and they kind of flow together a lot better. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. If I was filming this, these are just super quick one second clips. You just wanna get some B-roll that's just got a lot of action going on, um, super fast pace maybe. This would be good for that. And I would probably leave it like this. Where it kind of spins around onto the next clip. That's pretty much the most basic version of a speed ramp that you can possibly do. Um, it's super easy, it's super simple, and it makes your B-roll look really good when doing super fast action scenes. There is one other type of speed ramp transition that I know how to do, um, and I want to make an entire video on that as well, so I will definitely be doing that in the next week. With that, I hope that you all enjoyed. If you have any other video suggestions, any other type of transitions that you want to learn about, uh, just please leave them down in the comments. Later, guys.